Hello my dear students. Today's lecture is for PA 4th semester. The text for the discussion is Lord of the Flies by William Goulding. This is third lecture based on this novel. There are 12 chapters in the novel. The first chapter entitled The Sound of the Shell. Ralph the leading character, blew the conch shell and the noise produced by the shell brings the scattered boys together. The conch is symbol of authority and parliamentary order. The second chapter, Fire on the Mountain. Here, by the advice and guidance of the boys, especially Ralph, the boys attempt to make a signal fire on the top of the mountain. The signal fire is an important symbol of civilization and rescue throughout the novel. The boys gradually lost interest in fire. Losing interest in fire means losing interest in civilization and civilizing mission. Or in rescue, they paid more attention to playing than to monitoring the fire. The third chapter hurts on the beach. It represents a sense of security, especially for the little ones. Ralph refers to the herds as shelter. He tries to convince Jack of their importance. Chapter 4, entitled, Painted Face and Long Hair. Painted faces and long hair are powerful symbols that represent the boy's gradual decline into savagery. The hunters paint their faces like barbarians and allow their hair to grow long and unkempt. The mask that Jack as his hunters wear liberate them and are the outward manifestation of their inherently savage nature. Then we have the chapter Bees from Water and Bees from Air. The boys in this un inhabited island they are without any adults civilizing moors they develop a fear a paranoia about some sort of beast or monster lurking on the island the mythical beast takes on a variety of forms first as a dream then a snake or sea monster than the dead pilot's body. The real beast, actually, the text is telling, it is the evil. And this beast, this evil, lives inside the boys. But only Simon fully realized this. And ironically, he has been killed. When the other boys mistakenly think he is the creature itself. So till 5th chapter, I have done the discussion in the second part. Rest of, I will do the discussion in this part. Peace from air. Actually, it is a parachute drifts to earth. Sam and Eric thought it as a beast. Jack and Ralph too mistake it as a monster. And Jack... Uh, they want to kill it but they felt that they are unable to do it. The significant chapter is gift for the darkness. Jack uses the hunted pig's head as an offering to the beast in the chapter gift for the darkness. Simon hallucinates that the head is talking to him. Golden calls this head of the pig 
as the Lord of the Flies. This is a translation of biblical name Beelzebub, another name for devil. Then we have the chapters, the shell and the glasses, the castle rock, cry of the hunters. Now we are aware of the story that this is a story of a group of young boys who find themselves alone on a deserted island. They are free. They are without restraints, without police, without civilizing mores. They develop rules and a system of organization, but without any adults to serve as a civilizing impulse, the children eventually become violent and brutal. In the context of the novel, the tale of the boys descent into chaos suggests that human nature is fundamentally savage. So the text is talking about the savagery of human nature. The important theme of the text is good versus evil. The central theme of Lord of the Flies is human nature. Are we naturally good, naturally evil or something else entirely? This question runs through the entire novel from the beginning to the end. In his portrayal of the small world of the island, Wolding paints a broader portrait of the fundamental human struggle between the civilizing instinct and the savage instinct. There are always two impulses, forces working in the world. One is destructive, the other is constructive. Okay, so the constructive forces or the civilizing instinct, they is a kind of an impulse that wants to obey the rules, wants to behave morally and act lawfully. The savage instinct, the impulse to seek brute power over others, act selfishly, scorn moral rules and indulge in violence. In the second chapter, Jack's views are expressed through this, these lines. This is showing Jack's nationalistic fervor. He says, we have got to have rules and obey them. After all, we are not savages. We are English and the English are best at everything. See, the proud that those who are English, they are best. So we have got to do the right things. Jack is the only dynamic character here who in the beginning talks about rules, talks about civilization and gradually turns into a savage. He asserts that the boys should adhere to the rules of British civilization on the island. Later, in the novels, the boys descend into chaos. They become the so-called savages. It is proven that English children are depraved and inherently wicked like the rest of humanity. These lines are for Roger, the another significant character. Roger from the beginning is a cruel fellow. While Jack develops cruelty, but he is a thoroughly a cruel fellow from the very beginning. Roger comes from the German word and means spear. He is a sadist. Sadist is a person or a someone who enjoys inflicting pain on others. Roger repeatedly bullies the children by running their sand castles, throwing sand in their eyes and throwing rocks at them. Initially, Roger was 
little reluctant to throw pen stones on Henry. Rosa gathered a handful of stones and began to throw them. Yet there was a space round Henry, perhaps six yards in diameter, into which he dared not throw. Here, invisible yet strong, was the taboo of the old life. Round the squatting child was the protection of parents and school and policemen and the law. Roger refrains from throwing rocks at Henry not because of his uh, morals or consequence but because of the memory of society, society's rules, the protection of parents and schools and policemen and the law. This statement underscores Golding's view of human nature as fundamentally uncivilized, restrained by external authorities and societal restrictions. Roger represents the worst that develops in people when there is no civilization to keep them in line. Beast from Air One evening there is a dog fight between planes near the island and a fighter pilot ejects, killed in the air. His body floats down to the island and becomes entangled in the trees. A boy sees his corpse and parachute and is terrified, convinced that he has seen the monster. Jack, Ralph and a boy named Roger head off to hunt the monster and all three boys seize the corpse and run in terror. So now the children, they believe that there is really a monster. Jack and his followers begin to paint their faces and believe in an increasingly savage and primitive manner. While Ralph, Piggy and Simon try to maintain a semblance of order and shelters. When they realize that it is a monster, they wanted to run away from there. Jack attempts a coup but the boys refuse to wood Ralph down and Jack leaves in anger, saying he will start his own tribe. Rosa sneaks away to join him. More and more boys begin to sneak away to join to sneak away to join Jack's tribe. Lured by the roast pigs that Jack and his hunters are able to provide. Increasing violence. The children now they became more violent, bloodthirsty, they get involved in bloodthirsty chant and eventually death and murder follow. Gift for darkness. Simon is a very significant character. He is a saint or Christ-like figure, a savior, a good and a pure soul and positive Presenting positive outlook. Simon was the name of Jesus' apostle, Simon Peter. This hint at his spiritual role that he will play in the novel. Because of his spiritual nature, he understands what most boys of his age never think about. Simon, who sometimes suffers mental attacks, goes off into the woods, frequently to be alone. Hiding, he observes... Jack and his tribe perform a ritual designed to satisfy the monster of whom they are afraid. So they are offering a gift to that monster. They impale a pig's head on a sharpened stick and leave it as a sacrifice. It quickly becomes sown with flies and Simon hallucinates a dialogue with it, referring to it as the Lord of the and from here, the novel gets a title. The pig, which is sown with, the head of the pig, which is sown with flies, is actually the lord of the flies. The pig's head tells Simon, he is foolish to imagine. The monster is a flesh and blood thing. It is the boys themselves who are the monster. 
the lord of the flies then tells simon that the other boys will kill him because he's the soul of men simon is the only boy who hears lord of the flies speak and learns that bees is within himself rather than in jungle fancy thinking the bees was something you could hunt and kill these words are spoken by the head of the saw and this head is talking to simon the voice of the lord of the flies makes simon realize this that the even the boys have been looking for actually lives inside them even himself fancy thinking the beast was something you could hunt and kill so it cannot be killed it could not be hunted if a person thinks it's just his imagination as simon walks away he comes across the dead pilot and realizes that he has found proof that the monster does not exist simon is the most compassionate of the boys he is the like a priest or a saint exactly the opposite of jack when simon sees the dead man in parachute he frees me in spite of the horror he feels understanding that the beast doesn't exist externally but rather within each individual boy simon travels to the beach to tell the others what he has seen he runs back to the other boys who have begun to dance in crazy ritual when simon begins scratching through the trees the boys believe he is the monster and all the boys including ralph and piggy attack him in terror killing him kill the beast cut his throat spill his blood to him in at once the crowd surged after it poured down the rock leaped up from the beast screamed struck victor there were no words and no movements but the tearing of teeth and claws when the children see simon's shadowy figure emerge from the jungle they fall upon him and kill him with their bare hands and teeth they were full of violent frenzy a string of particularly strong verbs crunch scream surge pour leap struck bit tore is used to highlight the fierceness of the attack against simon the boys and most become a single unit more fearsome than the beast they think they are destroying The next morning Ralph and Piggy discuss what they have done they felt themselves responsible for the death of Simon Ralph feels sorry for that Jack's hunters attack them and their few followers and steal Piggy's glasses in the process Ralph's crew travels to Jack's stronghold in an attempt to make Jack see reason Ralph goes to their home on the other side of the island a rock formation known as Castle Rock he takes the conch and two other boys seminary he demands that Jack should return the glasses of Piggy Jack orders seminary tied up and fights with Ralph in the ensuing battle one boy Roger rolls the boulder down the mountain killing piggy and shattering the conch shell ralph barely manages to escape a torrent of spears jack orders the hunter hunters to go after ralph who is told by seminary that they intend to kill him and impale his head on a stick ralph flees into the woods but jack sets fire to the trees to drive him out as the flames begin to consume the whole island ralph desperately runs hitting the beach ralph trips and falls only to find himself at the feet of a british naval officer a ship spotted the flames and came to investigate all of the children including ralph and jack suddenly begin to cry collapsing in exhausted grief 
the officer is stern and expresses disappointment that good british boys would fall into such a state of misbehavior and savagery am i should this spectacle of this group of bloodthirsty savage children the officer asked ralph to explain ralph is overwhelmed by the knowledge that he is saved but thinking about what has happened on the island he begins to weep the other boys begin to sob as well this is these lines are from the end of chapter 12 occur near the close of the novel after the boys encounter the naval officer who appears as if out of nowhere to save them Ralph wept for the end of innocence, the darkness of man's heart, and the fall through the air of the true, wise friend called Piggy. Here, Golding explicitly connects the sources of Ralph's despair to two of the main themes of the novel. First, the end of innocence, Piggy dies, Simon dies, and the darkness of man's heart. it's because of the savage instinct of men the presence of savage instincts lurking within all human beings even at the height of civilization golding claims in this novel that evil can win in the end if we allow it if we do not listen to reason and compassion represented by piggy and ralph then evil represented by jack will overcome the rest who are not strong enough to resist it there are many devices which the author has used allegory symbol illusions imagery uh, it is a parable it is a, an allegory allegory is actually a work of fiction carrying two levels of meaning it has a one literal meaning and the other is symbolic or metaphorical meaning here all the characters they are representing some aspects ralph represents civilization order and democracy jack stands for savagery disorder and dictatorship Piggy symbolizes rational scientific thought. Simon represents human morality and goodness. The island setting is a microcosm of the wider world. It is a political allegory. The world was divided into two camps: the free world and the Soviet Union. Much like the camps of Ralph and Jack. In addition, the post-war Cold Era suffered from the fears of atomic destruction. Lord of the Flies shows the world at the brink of atomic destruction. The novel serves as a warning to the leaders of the world. It is also a religious allegory. Use of symbols. It's full of symbols. Symbolism is a use of symbols, images to represent an idea or qualities. Various symbols, pigs, spectacles, beast. the head of the uh, so piggy's glasses that is the last surviving wing evidence of the lawful structured world the beast the imaginary evil that is projected onto the island by the boys feroia lord of the flies then it is a edenic place and it is a microcosm world this this small world is actually representing the world at large this place is like a paradise where initially everything is available trees fruit food but that has been spoiled by men now in the conclusion of this ppt presentation i want to quote the words of sammy montjoy a leading character in golding's free fall the world around us was sliding on and down through an arc into a stormy welter where morals and families and private obligations had no place there was an arc in the mind where i lived and an arc in the world at large the tensions and ills corroding the present day world in diverse forms as unemployment poverty frustration and criminal activities are the direct consequences of the chaotic state of human mind thank you students see you soon